Hello and welcome to the podcast, Every Moment is Sacred, where we interweave meditation and healing into everyday life. I am your host, Rain Elizabeth Stickney. Now, let us begin. We are back. And we are back with more from Bodhi Starwater. Bodhi is an author, recording artist, musician, sound healer, and he is the magical, mystical, nature-loving stepfather from my childhood. I grew up with him, at least for part of my young years. And Bodhi has positively influenced me ever since I met him as a child. Please refer back to part one of this conversation, which was aired last week on Thursday. And Bodhi shares with us about sound healing, about music, about the spiritual path of music. And in this episode, we work to define the difference between sound healing and music. And we dive a bit deeper into the spiritual path of sound. Some of my favorite quotes from Bodhi that he says in both of these conversations are, the deeper I go into my art, the less I censor divine inspiration. Think about that one for a moment. Feel into it. When the magic of life moves through you, do you open to it? Sound healing is a wonderful practice that can help us open to the flow of life as it is moving through. And that is exactly what Bodhi does in all of his days and nights in his path through this world. He opens to divine inspiration and says, yes, yes, and yes, more often. Another quote from Bodhi is, we are living in a sonic universe. Just pay attention. And he shares True spirituality has to have vulnerability in it. Let's be vulnerable together, folks. Let's be honest about who we are and where we have been and where we see ourselves going. Right now, from this present moment, how are you? How am I? How are we together? This episode is airing on Dia de los Muertos, one of my favorite holidays. I love celebrating the ancestors. It is also November 1st, which is a new month, and we just celebrated Halloween. And as we turn toward the darker days of autumn, it's a wonderful time to turn toward gratitude And notice the peace in our hearts just as we are. Let us all notice what we are grateful for. I am so grateful for this moment now as I make this recording by the fire in my living room. I'm grateful for the technology that allows me to reach out to you and create this connection across time and space. I am so grateful that I get to share voices like Bodhi's and share messages across the world about healing, meditation, and creativity. In this episode with Bodhi Starwater, we take some listener questions And we discover what it might be like to be someone who is 
looking toward sound healing for the first time? How does a person get started in experiencing sound healing as a listener, as someone who might not really know what it is? What would be the first steps toward this healing modality? It is such a pleasure to connect with Bodhi and share his story with you. And you can find him all over on the web. You can visit his website, soundscapeoasis.com. You can watch the short film documentary of him that is on YouTube. You can visit his YouTube channel, which has tons of videos and information about his work in the world. You can listen to his many, 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 many songs and albums from the beginning of his career onward. And one of the places to do that is on Bandcamp. You can find him on all the music platforms, though, as well as social media. You can find him on Linktree. He is just available to you, not only online, but in person. He holds sound healing events in the San Francisco Bay Area, as well as in Mount Shasta, where he lives. He has been all over the world practicing sound healing and sharing his music. So look him up. All of the links are in the show notes. He is very easy to find. And of course, if you are looking to get started with sound healing, I recommend Bodhi as a wonderful resource. The book that he has already published is called Tao of Music. And the one that is coming out is called The Five Elements of Sound Healing. To begin this episode with Bodhi, we will fall right into a beautiful song called Being. And when that song is over, our conversation resumes and true to form, Bodhi sometimes breaks into song and conversation. He quotes his favorite people. And then at the very end, he treats us to a live moment of him playing music for us. His unique way of ending the conversation is closing the portal through sharing one of his favorite instruments. And because I do not share my regular outro at that time, I allow this conversation to end with Bodhi's final notes. I want to say thank you so much for listening. You can find out all about me on my website, rainelizabeth.org. And on December 7th, 2023, I will be gathering people together online for a meditation event for peace. So please visit my site, click on the link on the home page that says meditate and you can sign up for that meditation event and join me online in a sacred moment praying and meditating for peace within ourselves as well as all over the world and i am so happy to share with you the second part of my conversation with my beloved stepfather who I originally knew as Kip Sechko and now Bodhi Starwater. He addresses his names in this conversation in such a delightful way and really showing how each of us can transform moment to moment, especially if we listen within and we listen to the universe all around us and how life moves through us. Here we go. Enjoy this song from Bodhi's album, Chi, Q-I. And this song is called Being.
what is the spiritual path of music? Well, to me, there is no difference. It's it, the path is the path. It is a spiritual path. Life is a spiritual path. Whatever we do, you can choose to call it spiritual or not. Language is just a pointer, like we said. And so I think it really does always come back to love and to love yourself, love thy neighbor as thyself, love your life, approach things with love. And we're always learning about a deeper what love is. Action, love in action. Actions speak louder than words. There we go. So there's a way beyond the pointers. Actions just, you know, lead the horse to water. <laughs> Don't just point to the water, you lead the horse to the water. They say you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make them drink. So whether you point or lead and not being attached to, to the outcomes of our deeds or our actions, spirituality is a real conundrum to me. I don't, I don't think I've ever felt separate. Although I remember as a kid, I didn't really like always going to church, but I think sometimes I did. So it was back and forth both ways. And I, I would say that a real, true, deep spirituality has to embrace nature and animals and the balance of that. I mean, I like in the morning when the, the whole herd of deer come and just there's about five or six of them or seven of them. They come off and walk through and just hang out in my yard and graze and uh, just being with them. And what's their life like all day long, just walking around the forest and sleeping and eating and uh, it's like very simple life the animal lives and also very vulnerable, very exposed. So true spirituality has to have vulnerability in it. Mm. So trying new things, learning new things. I don't necessarily even call myself a spiritual person. But other people call me a spiritual person, but mm. I know all my flaws and all my dark. As uh, Jimmy Buffett says, there's a bank of bad habits in the corner of my soul. The wrong thing is the right thing until you lose control. So it's, uh, I'm human and human, you know, we're having, a, we're a body having, we're a human being having a spiritual experience, you know, that famous cliche that you hear all the time. So I don't know, I'm, I'm not much of a, I'm not much of a preacher. <laughs> but you are, you are a musician and a sound healer and the sacred spaces that you create for your sound healing events are phenomenal. They're just even transformative to gaze upon. I'm lucky enough to have been to an official sound healing event back in California, but which one did even, you go to? Did you go to one? Yes, yes. Um, it was let's see, Storm, my son was young. Todd came with me. Uh, we sat on the floor. It was hardwood. I believe it was in uh, Sausalito. Yeah, yeah. Well, they've evolved a long way since then. <laughs> yes, you've been at Grace Cathedral. You have a space on your property in your yurt, I believe. Yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the Soundscape Oasis Sound Healing Temple in Mount Shasta. Come visit. Come get a sound healing. Come I have a hip camp now you can stay at. It's so cute. You're up to so much good. I'm just imagining being with you in person again, and I miss you dearly. And I'm thinking about a time when you came to my apartment in Mill Valley and my son and his cousin were quite young and you did a sound healing storytelling adventure. Yes, for them. I do remember that. <laughs> so and I'm they just got a feather at the end of it. They did. Yes. And you taught them how to use their feather and they both had handles on them and they were large feathers. And I want to drive home this point that you create these beautiful healing spaces, whether you are having a conversation long ago, I would visit your garden. You just transmit possibility in the most delightful way. And I want to honor you for that. Oh, what a beautiful thing. Transmit possibility in the most delightful way. Just like a spoonful of sugar. 
in the most delightful way. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Rain, you have a way with words. Mm -hmm. Love it. This is great. We should talk more often. Yes. <laughs> yes, indeed. We could create a TV show every week. You know, we, <laughs> no, you're already doing it. I love that. Your podcast is Every Moment is Sacred. That's the name of your podcast? Yes. Yes. My God, that's so awesome. This is really great to, uh, to reconnect in this way. It, it, it deepens our life experience. Yes, it's new to connect in this way. Yeah, it is. It's a whole new, a whole new pillow of stillness. Yeah, so you, you, I think we came up with this idea as music is a spiritual path. Is that what we kind of came up with? Yes, I remember connecting with you about this podcast episode that we're recording. And you mentioned that music is a spiritual path, is something that's really important to you. So I wanted to be sure that I asked about it. Well, it's very interesting that I'm just remembering when I was 16, when I was a teenager and I was conflicted about going on a quote, spiritual path or being a musician. And I was, uh, I was in school and I was in a musical ensemble with Michael Stillwater, who's a musician and a singer. So uh, some people may know of him. And he and I were, were in high school together. We had a music duo in high school. And he's the one that actually first said, or maybe I said it to him. That's what it was. We, I don't, you know, sometimes when you're in a conversation, you forget who said what. You know, it's like, it's always remember. I think that I said it to him or he said it to me. I can't even remember now. I think I said it to him. We were both talk. We were both in that conflict together because he went on, he went on to become a student of, of uh, Sachi Dananda. And he lived at his ashram for a while. And he created a whole spiritual music path. And I went my own way and created, I actually went into pop music for a long time and folk music. And so, but one of us said, we were in this conflict and I, I think I said it to him even. He actually tells me that when we get, when we meet every few years, we'll see each other for a little bit and he'll say, Bodhi, you always said to me when we were in teenagers that music is a spiritual path. And that's how it unfolded. That's how the groundwork was laid for a life in music that included spiritual practices. So in a way, it was, I remember that. So that's where, where I realized it wasn't separate when I was a teenager. Beautiful. Just remembering that. And there's that magic of conversation again. Right, right. Well, we've talked about music as healing. And you've mentioned that music is different from sound healing, but we're also so happily linking them together as one. But just to pay tribute to the difference between being a musician and being a sound healer, what is the difference? That's a very good question. It's the one that I think about often, and, and they're definitely interrelated because a sound healer is creating sounds. A musician is creating sounds. So music contextually in culture is often used as an adjunct to a ritual or a ceremony. A wedding will have music in it. A memorial service will have music in it. Uh, a meditation ceremony will have music, kirtan or chanting. And so, and there is an art to the craft of music. There's knowing the theory, the music theory of how music is as we understand music to be, it, there, it's constructed just like painting is, is. You can have freeform painting where you're just throwing colors on the canvas, or you can have a very detailed, exact replication of a nature scene, which takes a little more attention to detail and skill to learn the techniques of recreating actual multi-dimensional colors of a cloud, right? That famous line in that movie where, what colors are the clouds? Well, they're white. Well, are they? Well, no, they're actually either gray, they're blue, they're purple, they're, they're all kinds of colors, the cloud is. So music's the same way. You hear a sound, and well, it's just a sound on the flute, right? It's just... So 
So there's those notes and someone goes, oh, that's beautiful sound. And then you can go to the music theory side. Well, it was the pentatonic scale in a rising series of notes that go upward and you can also go downward. So all these theory and techniques is what music is crafted from. You get into Bach and it's very mathematical and it's very systematic and there's rules about how you can move the notes around. Sound healing, someone can take a big crystal bowl and strike it once and go, ah, and it's just a tone. And so you don't need to know any music theory in order to do that. So that's the opening of the conversation. From there, you can go deeply in either direction, deeply into the music theory or just deeply into the one sound and just sit in the ohm all day or rattle. I mean, rattle for an hour, just one rattle. And there is a technique to using the rattle. So that would lean into the music side of how do you play the rattle so it's even, so it's consistent, so it's gentle. So it opens and invites a sonic experience that awakens some kind of state of consciousness. It's like the infinity symbol to me, sound healing and music. And from my experience and my practice, using music theory when it's needed to create a portal is very helpful and useful in creating a more deep, vast and broad varied kind of sonic journey of that. Wonderfully put. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> does that make sense a little bit? It does. And I love that you said that to ring a crystal bowl and to be with the resonance of that sound doesn't take any knowledge of music theory. That's something that anybody and do and enjoy and experiment with. Right. And many sound healers actually have a whole career in sound healing without knowing anything about music. And there's many musicians who, who just want to, you know, show off their technique and their chops. And, and that's fascinating in its own right. You can be mesmerized by watching someone on the guitar just, you know, fly. And you get mesmerized by that. And it's beautiful. So it all has its place. And I just think each person individually is drawn to their place, what our place is. Know thyself is really, really, really a powerful meme to sit with and to thine own self be true. And so, you know, all these, these interesting little biblical clips, you know, I'm not a Bible scholar at all. I'm not religious at all. But man, any tradition that has little what quip clips, what would you call them? <laughs> They're just <laughs> they like, wow. I mean, so finding where 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 you are and if you and if you're interested in something and you and you want to deepen your practice, learning about different arts, learning about color, learning about poetry, phrasing. So we speak more poetically. There's a way to enhance our life with the arts. And we all choose to what degree we're able to go into each of the arts. And the, and the, the technique of each one is you know, very simple to very complex, every single art form. So I feel like in that bridge between the simple and the difficult, or the simple and, simple and the complex, between the simple and the complex, there's always a... A, a, a bridge. There's always a spectrum. Just like between black and white, there's a million shades of gray. Or in my song, I call Shades of Green. I wrote a song called Shades of Green because I was out in Point Reyes and the trees were all of a sudden realized, wow, there's like a million shades of green. And then I went and tried to get the right gold for my book on the Tao of Music, the gold trim. It took me weeks to find there was millions and millions of shades of gold. And I just couldn't find the right, it took me weeks to find the right shade of gold. So in a way, sound is the same way. Sound healing versus music. You know, uh, a, a sign painter versus a classic fine artist. There's all these different, so that's the difference between a sound healer and a musician.
there is no difference. They're just on different ends of the spectrum. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then we and meet in the middle. <laughs> Don't we always meet in the middle? <laughs> if we're lucky. If we're lucky, well said. If we're lucky, we meet in the middle. And if we don't quite meet in the middle, it's okay. It doesn't have to always be fair or even. You've learned that in a relationship. You know, if it's never even or fair. <laughs> but it's always perfect. Yes, I've learned the word equitable to equitable. define. Yeah, it may not be halvesies, but it could be <laughs> equitable. It may not be halvesies. Oh, that's, there's, there's a kid term, halvesies. <laughs> Have these, okay? Share your toys. Have these, and all of a sudden you see your kids cutting up all your stuffed animals and each having half stuffed animal. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> that is a funny image. <laughs> <laughs> you told me to share with them. <laughs> I have equitable. Equitable. Thank mm -hmm. you. Equity. Yeah, equity as different from equality both meaningful and both important but they're yes. they're they're different equanimous yes internal internal yes. you know equ equanimity i mean yes. equa is everywhere yes yes i love equanimity yeah yeah equanimity loves us true i do have a question from a listener really yes what do you mean a really? listener a listener. Well, We're not, not no, the person is not listening right now, but I like to ask my listeners if they have any questions for an upcoming guest. And one listener said, what I really want to know is for somebody who's never experienced sound healing, how would that person get started with sound healing being a listener? So if I heard of sound healing and I thought, I want to experience that. I want to go to a sound healing or what do I do? What would that newbie look for? Well, as a, as a newbie on anything, I mean, the world is, is why, I mean, it's a vast wide open possibilities. And so in some ways jump right in, definitely trust your intuition as far as what because what i've experienced now is there's many many different kinds of sound healings it's as different as musical genres i mean do you want to go to a jazz concert a classical concert or a rock concert now someone would say well oh my god i don't like classical music i'll go to the rock concert yeah and somebody else will say like oh god i hate rock i'm gonna go to the jazz concert and someone else will say like i only listen to classical music so you know, you understand that analogy. Well, sound healing is actually these days in some ways broadening in many ways because there's some, some of the initial sound healings were just two tones put together slightly off tune to create a binaural beat. And heart math is all based in binaural beats and all those things of balancing the brain waves with creating a brain wave state of six to eight hertz in the mind by having two detuned pieces. So one sound healing could be just be, you know for 10 15 minutes and then now you've got crystal bowls you have tibetan bowls you have drums i mean shamanic drumming is famous the michael harner technique of shamanic drumming which he distilled down from all the world cultures of shamanic drumming just a drum Boom, 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 boom. It's, again, it's just that pulse. That's called isochronic beats as opposed to binaural beats. So just do a little re if you're really curious about it in a deep way and not just superficially, I want to go to a sound healing, well, then do some research. Listen to some sound. There's many sound healings online to listen to. And some sound healings, uh, I probably shouldn't say this, but some sound healings can be quite dissonant and not quite experienced enough to be relaxing. It can be a little, if people play a crystal ball too hard, too long, and they're banging it and they're singing out of tune, it, it can be, it can be a little, uh, like a beginner garage band listening to a, a rock and roll band kids that just started. So the easiest thing would be to just do a little research, feel into it and go to one. I'm um, they're everywhere. Now they're ubiquitous. They're happening everywhere, all over the place. 
and find out what instruments they're going to be playing, whether it's going to be flutes and rattles or whether it's going to be drums, crystal bowls, whether it's going to be gongs. I mean, the gong is very popular now, and it's been used for centuries. People have been using, ever since I was a kid, people have been doing gong baths. It's been around a long time. And now the beauty of sound healing is that it's all the world cultures are mixing and learning from each other and remixing. And so all the sound healers in the world now have access to all the techniques of all the world. So every single sound healing group has a different mix of, of styles and traditions. And in some sound healing is very rough. I mean, you know, really like drumming loud and shaking loud and really like disturbing to break up the energy, as they say. That's one way. So there's so many different kinds of sound healing. So it is a valid question. It's a really beautiful question, actually. And to just uh, do some research and find out what's available, and you'd be surprised how much information there is about them, and just do a little bit of inquiry about what you might want to listen to, whether it's crystal bowls or flutes or drums or gongs or didgeridoo. And these days, you'll probably get all of them in one sound healing. Does that kind of answer it a little bit? Yes. Yes, it does. And how would you classify yourself as a sound healer? I know you to be very wise and insightful and very experienced in what you offer, but how do you think of your sound healing work? Well, I definitely consider it more toward the intuitive school rather than the scientific school. The scientific schools do a lot of uh, studies of frequencies and what frequency does what to what in the body and and I've seen singers that can break up cancer cells over the phone by toning over the phone with a client. I mean, that's very a whole different approach, a whole different ex- skill, the scientific level of, of, of using this for that more allopathic approach to sound healing, which is uh, very prevalent in the world. And then there's the intuitive school. I, I definitely have to say that I pay homage to my teacher, Tito La Rosa, very profoundly for awakening in me what I already knew was sleeping inside. That's the quote I used from the book to dedicate the book to Tito because it's definitely the intuitive school and there's a lot of flutes and there's drums and there's rattles. And even Tito now coming from South America, Peru, he uses Tibetan bowls in his thing, right? I mean, Tibetan bowls are everywhere. I mean, the Tibetan sound healing, they have those giant horns they use. So I would say mine's more the intuitive school and and more organic, uh, you know, not so much synthesizer. I do use sometimes the use of a synthesizer, but definitely more organic and simple. That uh, and and most sound healing music is quite simple. So it's it's uh, I'm I'm definitely in the intu. I would say the intuitive school or de- organic, and and flutes. I mean, as a flute player, I would say the flute is the heart of my sound, even though I use all the other sounds now equally, there's something about the flute that definitely uh, is a way to drop in. I love that you're sharing that about the flute because that's my favorite instrument that you play. Mm, Yeah, well, I'm highly trained in the flute and I feel it and I've felt it since I was a teenager. So uh, there's something about experience that just naturally, like anything, it just... It, uh, it's, it just it flows after a while. We train ourselves in order to be free of the training, right? Yes, yes, yes. yes. And you were about to say something about portals when I interrupted you. Oh, no, I was, is that each, each of the different instruments opens a different portal in, in a way now. So there's a, uh, and I learned that from Tito, the whole concept of portals. And it makes so much sense because like we're in a portal right now, we opened the portal, we're in it now, and then we will close the portal together. And, and having that awareness makes transitions much smoother and much more graceful. So I really, my intention with my life now is ease and grace. That's the way I want to live my life as much as possible. So opening and closing portals gently is is a very important skill in sound healing and in relationship in general now i see it applying to all aspects of my life so the whole idea of each instrument creates 
and everybody relates to each instrument differently and and in every sound healing I do, all the people come up and they all love it and they all always say, and especially that, especially that flute. Or the other night it was especially that harmonica. I've learned this whole harmonica technique that's amazing. And somebody else was last, a couple nights ago, was like, that harmonica. And somebody else was like, oh, when those big drums came out. Oh, that was the moment for me. You know, it's like, it's amazing how each instrument and its frequency and its vibration resonates differently with each person that's that just shows how different we all are mm -hmm. yet we're all similar too so yeah so i hope that helps your listener find a way into the sound the exploding exponentially exploding sound healing world on the planet right now yes it's it's big time and if somebody wanted to get started with you which is my recommendation i recommend everybody interested and sound healing, whether you have experienced sound healing before, or if you are just curious or just hearing about it now, I recommend you find Bodhi. And there is a new book coming out. There is a book that is already out. The old one is Tao of Music. The new one is Five Elements of Sound Healing. There will be and a course, Five Elements mm -hmm. of Sound Healing as well. Eventually, that's another task. But I have a lot of people that find me uh, from podcasts and from interviews, and they find me through my website. And I have a few students around the world now, which has really been fun. Oh, that's great. And I'm open, I'm open to teaching. I love teaching. You are a great teacher. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Rain. And, and I actually listen to your music on Spotify often. And back in the day when I listened to Pandora, I listened to your music there. And so what are, what are some other ways people can reach out to you or just hear your music in person or online? Well, pretty much anywhere, any of the platforms. Uh, Bandcamp is where you can hear all my albums in one place. I have a Bandcamp, Bodhi Music Bandcamp. I think you can find it with that. It has my, all my albums you can download. For streaming, they're everywhere. Uh, look for Bodhi with the hat because there's lots of Bodhis now. When streaming first started in Whenever it was, and just the turn of the century, I was the only Bodhi on a lot of platforms, and it was Bodhi the artist, and then it became Bodhi New Age, and then I don't know. It, now there's lots of Bodhi, so I so I make sure I have a hat in every picture, so you can find me Bodhi with the hat. And I don't know what's going to happen with Bodhi Starwater. Bodhi Starwater just came out last year, and I'm using it now. I feel like in all my evolutions of names, it was uh, it was like. My first name, Kip, was like the young musician finding his way. Kevin became the singer-songwriter, and then the flute player, and the flute player became Bodhi, and then Bodhi became, then the sound healer is Starwater. So it's like um, each of my names <laughs> morphs with my, with my evolution as an artist. You know, I guess Prince did that. He's famous for just being Prince, the symbol, formerly known as. So... I'm Starwater, formerly known as Bodhi. I don't know. A restless artist is always, it's just these, you get these inspirations, these channelings, you, you just get out of the way and these things come through and, and you can either choose to express them or not, right? And the, the deeper I go into my art, the, the less I censor the divine inspiration. <laughs> so yeah, Bodhi, it's all just one word, Bodhi, on all the streaming platforms. I'm so glad people can find you in so many different places. Yeah, it's great. Is there more that you would like to share before we close this portal? <sighs> Smell the flowers and blow out the candle. That's my favorite kids' meditation. I heard that from elementary school music teacher, and then I discovered it was everywhere. It's a pretty famous kids' meditation, but it's a very simple way to remember to just take a breath through the nose whenever you feel anything, dis-ease, discomfort, anxiety, just take a few moments to smell the flowers and blow out the candle and equanimize yourself your own private personal sound healing and hum a little bit. Uh, you're 
resonate your whole body breathing and humming and you can bring yourself back to center sound healing is always available we are living in a sonic universe just pay attention I am so grateful for you, Bodhi. <laughs> ah, thanks for having me on your beautiful podcast. This is so exciting. Would you like to sound us out with one of your instruments nearby? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> 